Good morning, good morning. Hey there, Heartbeat Andrea. Good morning to you. Hey, Heartbeat Sherry. Good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Rabina. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Hey, Heartbeat Elaine and Heartbeat Donald. Hey, Harvey Troy, we have made it to the middle of the week. We are doing just great. Happy Wednesday to you, too. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you guys woke up with bells and whistles on this morning, ready for the day, ready to receive all the favor that God has for you, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So let's go ahead and get, <clears throat> excuse me, let's get started this morning. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer. And this morning we will be continuing on in what we were with yesterday. Good morning, Heartbeat Juanita, Heartbeat Annette, Heartbeat Christine, Heartbeat Carolyn. Good morning. We will continue on um, with yesterday. I'm getting better with forgiveness part two. I'm getting better with forgiveness part two. Now, forgiveness, again, is something that you have to work on all the time, just like renewing our minds. It is something that you must do daily. Amen. Thank you so much, Harpy Carolyn. Romans 12, 2 King James Version, that's been our foundation scripture with renewing of the mind. And it says this, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so remember, if you're not transforming, you are conforming, which means you're conforming to the ways of the world. You're falling into the tactics and the strategies of the enemy, the world of darkness. So we want to make sure that we are always transforming with the renewing of our mind. And again, the renewing of the mind is something that you have to do daily. It's not something that you can do just one time and think that you have it. You have to renew your mind daily. So let's get back into forgiveness where we were on yesterday. Amen. Ephesians 4.32, and I'm reading it out of the Passion Translation. It says this, it says, but instead be kind and affectionate toward one another as God graciously forgiven you. Has God graciously forgiven you? I'm sorry. Then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. And so it's saying, has Christ forgiven you? It's asking you a question. And of course, your answer is yes. Then it's like, okay, well, then if Christ has forgiven you, then you have to graciously forgive others. The Message Bible says it like this. It says, make a clean break with all cutting, back backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive, forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as, as God in Christ forgave you. And so in this scripture, we see in both translations that you have the ability to forgive because it's in Christ and Christ is in you. And so it says, make a clean break with all cutting, no backbiting. So that means no get back spirit. No revenge. You know, the for me, the best revenge is, is none. You know, just heal, move on, and don't become like those who hurt you. You know, like bitterness. Don't become bitter. Don't become envious. Don't become jealous. Don't be, you know, be stuck in grief. Don't become um, resentful, angry, or regretful. You do not want to be like the people who have offended you because we know hurt people hurt people. And our objective is to move forward, to be healed, to be made whole. We don't want to have a get back spirit. We don't want to be revengeful, revengeful and be like, th like them. For we know vengeance is not of us. It is of the Lord. And so that is a thing that you want to make sure that in this phase of forgiving, that you're not holding on to anything. You're not plotting your own revenge. You know, you know something about them. And so you want to put it out there or you know how to push their buttons as well. And you want to hurt them. That's not the way of God. That would be considered conforming to the world instead of transforming with the renewal of your mind. And so um, we want to like all of those things that I just listed, 
Look at how unforgiveness starts off, but then look at what it attracts. It attracts all of those attributes that I just went over. So you start off in unforgiveness and then because you will not forgive, you attract all of those things that I just listed. You become a magnet of everything that's associated with the world. You become a magnet of everything that's associated with Satan. And so once again, if you're not transforming, you're conforming. I'm going to keep saying that because I want that to be embedded in your mind. I want you to think about it, that if, if I'm not transforming by the renewing of my mind, I'm conforming. That means I'm going backwards. I'm being I'm stagnated. I am not moving. And so we do not want to be in that area. We want to also remember that forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. It's not about making the other person feel better. It's about making you feel better. It's about you aligning with with God. It's about you being in the will of God. It's about you being in the right place. It's about your heart being pure. It's about your heart being clean. So when I forgive, what kind of time I have. So when I forgive, I'm not looking for an apology because most times you will not get one. Hate to say that to you, but most times you will not get one. Hurt people hurt people and they don't realize that their actions are, are wrong or or they think that you should see it the way they see it. And so they don't think they've done anything. They don't think that they owe you an apology. But when I walk in true forgiveness, I'm not looking for an apology. Because remember, it's not about them. It's about me being set free. It's about me being aligned with God. It's about me being in the right place. It is not about them. And so you probably will not get an apology and you cannot let that hold you in a place where God does not want you to be. Um, number two, when I forgive, I'm releasing all feelings that I've been harboring. And so I'm releasing the resentment. I'm releasing the hurt. I'm releasing the anger. And here is where you take your power back. Pastor G, what are you talking about? See, when I'm not harboring ill feelings, I've now taken my power back because when I'm harboring ill feelings, I've given the offender power. I've given them the ability to make me feel a certain way. And you have got to be in control of your own emotions. And so when I'm able to release these feelings, I've now taken my power back. I'm in charge. I'm in control. And so I'm no longer like um, um, baggage that's on a, um, you know, when you're at the airport and you're trying to get your baggage off the turnstile. I'm no longer like that baggage that just keeps going around and around and around waiting for somebody to pick me up. No, now I'm able to push the stop button, get off and carry my own baggage. See, when I'm like all emotional and I'm being an emotional bookkeeper, it's as if somebody has placed me in a bag and they're carrying me. It's like my emotional emotions are in control. But when I take my power back, I'm now carrying the baggage. I'm now in control. I'm now telling, directing the baggage where to go. And so when I'm able to release all of these bad feelings, the resentment, the bitterness, the jealousy, the envy, I've now taken my power back. I'm now in control and you are supposed to be in control of your own emotions. Nobody can make you do anything. See, um, walking in forgiveness is a choice that you make. And I already told you from Ephesians 4.32 that it's on the inside of you. It's within you. So you have the capability to forgive. And so it's a decision that you have to make. You have to take the power back. You have to make a decision that I'm walking in the ways of God. You have to make a decision that I'm going to transform with the renewing of my mind, that I'm not going to stay stuck in the past. I'm not going to stay stuck in that position. Did it happen? Did it hurt? Absolutely. But I've got to learn to learn from what happened to me and move on. I've got to remember I'm not what happened to me, but I am who I choose to be. I choose to be victorious. I choose to be an overcomer and I choose to walk in forgiveness every day of my life because I am not going to allow something to tie the hands of the the Holy One of Israel when it comes to me. Nothing is worth missing the plan of God for my life. Nothing. Hear me when I say it. Nothing is worth missing the plan, the will of God for my life. So take your power back. Get out of that bag. 
walk in the ways of God. Amen. So when I forgive, and I'm not going to finish all of this based on the time here. So when I forgive, number three, I release the offender. And this is for those who have received an apology, but you're still mad. <laughs> you know, they apologize, but whatever. You know, they're not really sorry. Look at their actions. This is, you've got to release the offender. That is also a part of true forgiveness. You cannot walk around and still hold resentment against that offender. You've got to do that. Amen. So listen, I'm going to stop right here because tomorrow we'll go over the steps to forgiving. I don't have enough time to finish it, so I'm not even going to start it, but you've got to take your power back. Amen. You've got to know that you may not receive an apology and that's okay. But true forgiveness starts with just knowing that I may not receive an apology and that's okay. And so you've got to know that you've got to know releasing all feelings you've been harboring. That's when you know that you are truly forgiven. And then the last one that we went over, you've got to release the offender, let it go, set them free. No matter whether or not you agree with them or not, you've got to release the offender. Remember, God can't forgive you if you don't forgive others. Amen. Hey, listen, that's your daily dosage. And we're going to keep on working on this thing of forgiveness because we are going to be set free. We're going to walk in our wholeness and we're going to be able to see what God truly has for us. You have no idea how it feels to be set free once you have truly forgiven someone. You're able to walk in all of the things of God. And if God allows me to share, I'm going to give a personal testimony of how once I was able to truly forgive, I was able to see, I was able to operate in all the things of God. Amen. So again, that's your daily dosage. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so. There you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Say, God wants me whole. And I am getting whole by the minute. Again, I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, a.k.a. the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And it is my, I'm telling you, I'm going to make sure that you guys get whole. It is, it, it means so much to me to see the people of God walking in wholeness and being set free from all of those strongholds that have been holding you back. Again, Love you guys a bunch. I'll see you here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. as we continue on and I'm getting better with forgiveness. See you in the morning.